listing today. Keaton again put this low because that's what he's working. I'm going to put listings that close up to, I'm going to put at least 75% on here. Then you work on your buyers. So the percentage of buyer leads that convert to an appointment. And so he had 80%. When you get buyers, most of those you're going to be able to convert if you're following up with them. And then percentage of appointments that result. So you've got that buyer appointment, you get an open house like uh, Jessica was talking about right before we started this. And let's put that, those buyers, we're going to convert them up to, it's not, let's see if we can get it to change. Boy, this is moving really slow, guys. Hmm. So we can get it to move down. Completely froze. Am I frozen? Okay, I'm going to try this a little. There we go. It's moving a little bit now. Not much. This is what happens with the internet, isn't it? Okay, we're going to stop sharing this and we're going to come back to this in just a little while. And we'll see if the internet picks up and it's a little bit better with that. Basically, what I want you to know with that in that background is how many deals you need to do. So how many listings do you need to take in this quarter? How many buyers are you gonna need to take in this quarter? So we'll go back, somebody remind me to go back if we have time and we'll look at that. So let's pull the PowerPoint back up. I don't think I'm gonna get off up here again. Uh, if we're doing this with the internet the way it is today. So set your goals, we've gone over that, and then start tracking your numbers. Again, I went over this with Keaton, and y'all need to go in there, the system is in there so you can track your numbers. Keaton said he tracks his once a week. I don't care when you track that, but they need to be in there for Friday for you to get credit for them. And then the other thing is don't forget your KW bucks. Uh, I saw, thank you, that, um, Babat put those in there. Love that. I can't remember. Was it nineteen hundred dollars you got this week on KW Bucks? So as far as I know, she's leading the pack. So I'm going to extend this week to the end of today. Go in there and get your KW Bucks. Fill it out, and then you should have a folder inside your box um, file so that you can go in there and uh, put that your KW Bucks in there. And Carrie will give you credit for it in your bank account. And then practice your listing presentation. Who in here has been practicing your listing presentation? Some of you may have one and you're not going to use the one that I've got. Jenny, thank you for raising your hand. Anybody else? Can't see some of you. Jessica, Aaron, have you looked at yours yet? Do you have one already? Have you made some changes? You and I talked about that. I do have one already. Um, I just got my box folder of stuff today. So I've been sifting through it, downloaded the listing presentation. So okay. I have not practiced the new one, but I do have it. Okay. We are going to practice that. So y'all just get ready because we're going to have interaction like this. This class is not going to be me talking all the way through because you're going to learn more when you share and do that. Except for Asa. He's always frozen out there. <laughs> I may be getting like you. At least I get, see, I get a smile out of him. Uh, Babette, have you looked at the listing presentation? Are you already using another one? What are you doing with that? Uh, yes, I looked I looked at it. I like it really well. Boy, I can't thank you enough for all this stuff. Um, it just so happened that when I went and did what you would call a listing presentation, they were with people I knew that, mm -hmm. and I just brought them um, my CMA and that type of information. So this will be great. Um, to well, eventually I'm going to hit a stranger, somebody that I don't know. And yeah. uh, so I, I need, I, uh, yeah, I've looked, looked at several and I really like, I really like that one. So thank you for saying that. And one of the things I want y'all to think about is what she said. She said they, my presentations have been with people that I know. And so when you know them and you know, you've got the listing, go ahead and get it signed, but go back to your listing presentation and talk to them about things that you're going to do to market it because if something happens and you have to go back and they'll go you didn't do this like for instance they may go you never advertised in the arkansas democrat gazette and we see that all the time with Cowell banker because they do that all the time if you tell them that you're spending your money on things that gets them the most marketing dollar to get their home sold 
in the best, the quickest way with the least amount of stress and you show that to them and say, I don't spend it because less than 1% of your money comes back on that. Once you go over these kind of things, then they're not going to be upset with you and they're going to understand what you're spending your money on. So there is a reason to go back through those things if they have time. The most important thing is to get it signed, like you said, and thank you for those nice compliments. So, and then remember contract classes are the first and second uh, Wednesday. Those are with Jody. And then we're doing, I, I called it before, um, what next, but we're doing the welcome to productivity coaching. So if you know someone that missed the first one where I go over all these systems and things like that, they're gonna be on the first and third Monday at, from 1.30 to three. So if you wanna invite someone to come or if you feel like you would like to hear what the systems were, again, you're welcome to come back to those. So today we're gonna to get started on, and I know Mike is waiting. Uh, I didn't want to, I'm sorry, Mike, I didn't mean to talk that long on that and I didn't mean for my internet to get hung up. So next week, I want you to know we're working with buyers and we're gonna include open house strategies in there. So I hope that's, I'm hearing a lot of you are working with buyers. So I think this is another basic that we need to get included in here. So, somebody read this to me, unmute yourself. I said, we're gonna cover this every week. Somebody read this out loud. Or all of you, if you wanna unmute yourself and read it, I'd love it. Okay. Leadership, Leadership. you have a choice, choose Forward. success. What is the one thing you can do? Such as by doing it, um, everything, everything else, else will be easier and necessary. Or unnecessary. Great, thank you. Uh, that's what that's what we're doing with the 411 when you're setting all those things. What is the one thing? What's that big rock? What's the one thing that you can do, such as by doing it, everything else is going to fall into place? That is your roadmap for success, along with your GPS. All right, we've already talked about this. We may come back to that. Mike, I am going to let you get on here and share profit sharing because I'm excited. You guys get a pencil and paper and write this stuff down because this is an avenue that he's going to share how you can make financial freedom. And I know, um, I know how I felt about this before I came to Keller Williams and I know how I feel today, much different than I did then. This is financial freedom that I can pass on along with my legacy. And there's no other company out there that does this. So Mike, yeah. take off. All right. Hey, guys. First of all, how, how are you? Does everybody hear me? Um, we're here, and there's it's a big room. Is everybody, am I coming through okay? Anybody having any trouble? If so, uh, go ahead. And I'm on, I'm on Kathan's uh, Zoom also, so you can put a chat in there. Kathan's watching the screen. But, uh, but man, it's good to see you all and some good, good friends on this call. And uh, Babette, hi, I was talking to you earlier. Courtney Standridge, it's good to see you out there and a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good faces. And I want to talk for a few minutes. I want to break something down. Um, when it comes to profit share, it's quite a mystery. There's a lot of, it, it, there's mystery. Even within the company, it's one of the most misunderstood things that is, that is a part of, of Keller Williams. So I want to ask you guys a question. How many have seen these big checks around the office? If you've seen these, there's one, in, there's a couple in Bentonville, there's one in Fayetteville, something about, something about our agents and a big check. There's a big number in there, tens of thousands of dollars, $36,000 last month paid out in profit share. Is anybody- Mike? Yeah. Hey, I was just gonna tell them, if y'all at the very top, there's a place, some of you may not know this, that you can do speaker view and it makes Mike big and you'll be able to see the, uh, the board better. Wonderful. I think if the host changes it, if you do it, I think everybody else will be able to see it as well. I did it. I did. I changed it. And I think we should be good then. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So, so we got these checks around around the market center. So, have you ever have you ever seen that? Maybe you haven't even seen them. Maybe you've seen them and you thought, well, who gets that? How do they get that? Um, what is what is that all about? Well. That's about profit share, about sharing for a company that shares in its profits. So in the next, and I do mean in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to explain to you exactly how that gets paid out and who gets that. Does that, uh, does that sound like a good way to spend 20 minutes? And, and, and then maybe afterwards, we might have a couple minutes of question, question and answer. So here's basically, here's basically the layout of this. What I want to do is I want to start with a hypothetical agent. 
I want to ask you all a question. Is it possible for an agent in our company to earn $10,000 in gross commission income in one month? That's a big question. That's a big ask. Is that possible? Is that even happening? Well, let me tell you, let me, you know, first off, it is a rhetorical question. Uh, our average gross commission income uh, company-wide is about $6,600 per, per agent uh, on average. And so $10,000 would be a pretty big brokerage fee. You might be talking, you might be talking two homes in there and not, not one. You might be talking three small homes. You might be talking, you can do it in one, one big home. I know Beth, Beth's had a couple of closings. And uh, I, I believe her, her gross commission was, was probably, I'm sure it was somewhere in this area as a newer agent. Congratulations on that closing last month about that. So my question is, we're gonna take an example of an agent who earns $10,000 in a gross commission income in a particular month. So what we do is, you understand something, we're an open book company. Every number that I'm gonna go over is something that we record each month and then we report it and it goes seven, eight years back. We track this on a monthly basis, year in and year out. So I wanna, I wanna share some numbers with you because we need to know these numbers if we're gonna figure out how much profit share we have and who gets it, right? Okay, so one number I wanna, I wanna talk to you about is the company's gross commission income just asked you about an individual. How about on a monthly basis? What's the average monthly gross commission income that Keller Williams in Northwest Arkansas alone makes? And quite frankly, that's about a million and a half dollars. Did you know that last year we took in from brokerage fees, the gross commission to our company up here was right at $20 million in 2019. Uh, when you see our MCA, thank them, thank our staff. They're handling $20 million worth of checks each, each year, which is a pretty big number. But we're gonna take a month, we're gonna take a hypothetical month, and our actual average is a little higher than $1.2 million. And can everybody see this on the screen, Kathan? Can you give me a nod of the head? Um, um, that's what I'm pinging. Are you? Look at you, thank you. So in this particular month, a $1.2 million gross commission income for the company. Let me ask you something. Does the company get to operate on a million two? Uh, no, and, and there are several reasons why the company doesn't operate on that. And I'm gonna tell you the number one reason. The number one reason is the majority of the money that comes into our door from a brokerage fee from a title company, from a closing, the majority of that goes to cap agents. Cap agents do about 60, a little more than 60% of the business that's being done at, at Keller Williams Market Pro Realty. So I'll give you an example. Out of that a million two, about $700,000, pretty big number, that goes to capped agents. Now, when an agent's capped at Keller Williams, when an agent's capped at Keller Williams, how much money do they pay to the to company dollar or to the market center? Easy, easy answer, it's zero. In other words, they, they earn that full amount. So the first thing is, is $700,000 goes to CAC agents, the majority of the gross. Well, what's left over and what do we call what's left over? Now I wanna do a little math here. If I take 700,000 from 1.2 million, it comes up with 500,000 dollars. And we have a name for what's left over. This is, this is gross commission income after the capped agents have been paid. We call it POV. That's short for paid on volume. What that means is this is the volume of commissions that, that the company is going to get paid on. And so what we know, of course, is that the company dollar is generally 30%, 30% of, of the commissions that come in. That leaves 70% of it, again, to the agents. So what's 70% of 500,000? It's it go back out to the agents. Stay with me on this. This also gets paid to the agents. I'm gonna reiterate, that is the agent's portion of the paid on volume that goes to the agents. And that leaves a number 
I don't know how well you can see this, but $150,000. And now we're getting down to the nitty gritty because what we have, what we call that is company dollar. That's finally, after the gross commission comes in, the capped agents have been paid, the, the splits to the, the paid on volume gets, gets distributed, the agents get their portion, that leaves 150,000 in company dollars. Now, that is a little lower than our average. If you look, again, we track all these numbers, these are all reported every month in our multi-year trend report. And what you're gonna see is, we actually do a little higher than that. Um, hold on to your hats because June of 2020, we're tracking to almost 280,000 in company dollar. It's a big number. Uh, how we doing? Well, you know, how you doing? Uh, that's a big number in company dollar. We're excited. That's a that's a real drop the mic month. Uh, it's going to be bigger than it was last year for us. So. But 150,000 for this illustration, for this example, what we do is we work our way down to find out what the company has made, the company dollar. Now, does the company, does, you know, is that considered profits? Obviously the answer is no. And what's the number one reason why that's not a profit? Because we have expenses. That's why, once again, we're an open book company and we track expenses. It's why we have a finance committee that goes over our expenses so we can control expenses because the lower the expenses, of course, the higher the profits. So I'm going to tell you, if you've been in our finance committee meetings, you know that our expenses track around approximately $90,000. Again, open book, we track it, it's, it's reportable. And uh, so we, we, uh, we track our expenses. So in this example, what would that mean? It means after our company dollar, after expenses, we come up with $60,000. And what do we call that, anybody? By now you should be catching on. We call that profit, right? Hey, good, good thing, good thing. Profit matters. We want to be a company that models profitability for our agents. Because by the way, all of these numbers for our market center, every individual should understand their expenses. Every indivi individual should be able to be tracking this on a monthly basis. And we want to model that for our agents. But, uh, but I'm going to take a second at this, 60,000 in profit. So in any other company that you've ever worked for, and any other real estate company that exists on the planet, who gets that money? You know, got it? Owner. That's, that's owners. Owners are best. Hey, Joseph Hayes just walked mm -hmm. in and took it. This is, this is what the owners and the investors of that company get. But when and when a Keller Williams franchise opens up, and the, and the investors are determined, we sign an op agreement, operation agreement, and I'm speaking here kind of, kind of firsthand, I'm very blessed to be one of the, one of the group of eight agents involved in this. We've agreed to pay back in profit share half, roughly half. Technically, that number's around 48, 49% every, every month. To, and it's a technical way to get to that number, but for, for purposes of an illustration, half of that is going to be put in a profit share pool. I'm gonna call it profit share. This profit share pool is trackable, and that's, that's where you see the numbers on the checks, um, is where you see this profit share number. Now the question, the big, big question is, who gets a piece of that? How do they get a piece of it? And how much? How is that determined? Well, stay with me. I'm bending over and looking at a camera. It's a little different than talking to real people, but, uh, but it's fun. I'm having fun. I hope you guys aren't falling asleep yet. Uh, so we're going to take our hypothetical month here. We're going to call this March. Somebody leaving? Um, we're going to call this March. Okay. Remember what I said in the month of March? that Babette closed a home and had 10,000 in, in, in gross commission income. 
So let's, let's talk about that. Babette is over here. She is not capped. She has not capped. So this $10,000 is not part of the capped agent's money, is it? But it is part of this paid on volume. It's part of this bit of money that's left over after the capped agents. So I'm gonna ask you a question. If everyone can see this number, does everyone see that's a half a million? That's 500,000? Yes. And everyone knows that Babette is responsible for $10,000 in gross commission income. That's part of this. And anyone who are my math geniuses, what percentage of 500,000 is $10,000? What, if we reduce that to a percentage, um, if anybody is my super math with us, do you realize that the answer to that is 0.02%? Uh, it's it's 2% of half a million. Take my word for it, $10,000 is 2% of a half a million. So if Babette contributed 2% to the paid on volume, doesn't it stand to reason that Babette contributed 2% of the company dollar. And we'll get down here, can we see that? The answer is yes. She contributed 2% of the company dollar. So after expenses were taken out of the company dollar and we have profits left over, doesn't it stand to reason that Babette contributed 2% to the overall profit? And doesn't it continue on that we can determine that Babette contributed 2% to the profit share amount? Go ahead and say yes. Trust me yes. on this. She, she's contributed 2%. What is 2% of $30,000? Can anyone do that? Kathan, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's 600 bucks. Sure. $600. So do you see when we track these numbers and we track Babette's numbers, we can come down to our profit share pool and say, Babette, thank you for your closing this month. You've contributed to the profitability. Our market center was profitable. You are responsible for $600 in profit share. So, so you're there with me. So here's the question. And here's, the, uh, here's, here's how we do this at Keller Williams. Now that's responsible for $600 in profit share. But who's responsible for Babette? being at Keller Williams. See, when Babette came to Keller Williams, she named a sponsor, somebody that was influential and significant for her joining the company. Babette, can you unmute yourself and tell us, tell us who that is? That would be Brandy Palmer. Oh, one of my favorites. <laughs> I love Brandy Palmer. So here's, here's the thing. If you guys can see this over here, this circle represents Babette, but Babette has a sponsor, Brandy Palmer, VP. We're gonna, we're gonna put her in here. So Babette's responsible for $600 in, in, uh, in profit share in this particular month. But you know who's really responsible, who Gary wants to reward? He, who's really responsible is her sponsor, Brandy Palmer. So because of that, Brandy is going to get 50% half of the $600, in this case, it's 300 bucks. Brandy, her sponsor's gonna get it. But now, hey, wait a second. Brandy has a sponsor. And now you guys are gonna know why I picked Babette, because I happen to be Brandy Palmer's sponsor. <laughs> Yours truly. Now, I'm going to earn 10% of what Babette contributed, in, because guys, I'm responsible for Brandy Palmer being with the company. So the company wants to reward reward me. 10% of that is 30 bucks, right? No, it's 60 bucks. But wait a second, I had a sponsor, didn't I? It's the wonderful Johnny Williams out of South Lake, Texas. Kind of a kind of a big producer, a guy who was in my wedding 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago. He's my sponsor into the business. He doesn't live here. He doesn't know any of you guys, but because he sponsored me, he's gonna pick up 5% of whatever Babette does which is 30 bucks. Johnny Williams has a sponsor. It's Chris Mintier. She's a she's top agent in Keller Williams in South Lake, Texas, by the way. If I bet, uh, anyways, I, I, I digress, but, but because, because Chris Mintier will also earn 5% or $30, Chris Mintier had a sponsor. 
Her, her name is Mary Taylor. I barely, I barely know Mary Taylor, but she'll earn seven and a half percent, which is forty-two fifty. And Mary Taylor had a sponsor. I don't know who that is, but they're going to earn ten percent or sixty dollars. And they had a sponsor. This is getting crazy. You got to stay with me. They had a sponsor, and they're going to earn twelve and a half percent, which is seventy-two fifty. Now, all right, take a deep breath. I'm going to do the same thing. Let's talk about this. What's going on here? What 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 is what is this? This is complicated, right? This is complicated. It seems like that was the number one criticism when this came out in the early '90s. Was what, what's the what's the reason? There's several reasons that I want to explain to you how this came about and why this makes sense. It's simply a it is a disbursement. It is a way to disperse compensation. A lot of, a lot of syllables in there, but it's a compensation disbursement method. Gary wanted to share the profits of the company. He wanted to share it with people that helped grow the company. And there were several ways to do that. He looked into employee owned situation, but we're not employees. We're all 1099 independent contractors. We, we're not employees. Couldn't do that. And we looked at, he looked at going public with stocks. Probably the easiest way is to go public and start dealing with stocks. But you lose control of your company when it becomes publicly traded and, and the decision making process. This allows us to remain a private company, the, the largest by far private real estate company in the world, or, or the largest company, period, in the world. Um, but this, this is a compensation, a way to disperse this $30,000, and, and he wants to reward the agents that are helping grow the company. Profits matter, growth matters. Growing, growing our company really does matter to Gary, and he wants to reward the, the folks that do that. Now, yes, this is complicated. By the way, if you add up all these percentages that I wrote, 50, 10, 5, 5, 7 and a half, 10, 12 and a half, if you added up all those percentage, what did you come, what did you come to? You came to 100%. All of it gets paid out. All of it goes to agents. And, uh, and, and you look at it, I want to say three things that are important to know about this way of dispersing money. Number one, it is a, uh, there is no management oversight. You're not going to be responsible if, if somebody comes to this company and names you as a sponsor. We have training. You introduce them to Marcella. They get into productivity training. They get trained. We're, get, we're going to do everything to walk with them and build their career. It's not your responsibility to be a trainer. Now, also, I want you to know something. There's no capital outlay in this program. Here's what I mean. You can't buy into this. Nobody, you can't write a check. This is the most understood, misunderstood thing outside our company. They say, oh, it's that pyramid scheme. No, no, you cannot buy this. You can't, you will never, ever write a check. It's impossible. So there's no, there's no pyramid scheme. It's a gift from the owners when they're profitable to pay back to the agents. It, it, it's, it's simply that. That lastly, there's, there's no financial risk. What if, what if the market center wasn't profitable one month? Would we go to Kathan and say, hey, Kathan, I'm sorry, we're gonna need a check from you. We just didn't, we weren't able to pay our expenses. There's no risk. The risk is taken on by the, by the investors and the owners. And that's why, oh, by the way, that's why we have close to a half a million dollars, very close, a little less, close to a half a million dollars in cash. We're a cash company, we don't borrow money. We zero and balance, we balance our books every day. So all of this, guys, to tell you, I want to get to this closing point. We're getting close. What is the opportunity? What is, what is the profit share opportunity? And it, it, it looks like this. Here you are. Anyone who comes to this company, brings their license, and names you as the sponsor, if this is you and anyone you name, which, by the way, what is the limit? What's the limit on how many people you can sponsor at Keller Williams? Kathan, it didn't even fool Kathan. That's a trick question. There's no limit. Nobody, right? Okay. <laughs> you can sponsor as many people as we, as we choose. 
and we will then earn when they, we're prop when they when they contribute to the company dollar and they're profitable we'll earn 50 percent of what's earmarked for for them for profit share we'll earn half of that anybody that we sponsor we can sponsor numerous people the exciting thing is anybody they ever sponsor you'll earn 10 percent of what they're responsible for in profit share and anybody they ever sponsor five percent and anybody they ever sponsor five percent and anyone they ever sponsor seven and a half percent and anyone they ever sponsor ten percent and finally seven levels down twelve and a half percent we who are in profit share and who engage in profit share we earn a report every week that shows this and that we get we get a report and we get we get our numbers but um, I'll tell you it was it took a few years for Gary to settle on this on this system and it led to a lot of things that have to do with culture with our with our company and here, here's what I mean when I say that no real estate company to this day opens their books up and shares their expenses their profits their their company dollars what they're paying the agents they, it's just not really done Gary realized once he introduced profit share he, he realized he couldn't just go to his agents and say hey sorry guys we just weren't profitable last month we, we just it was it wasn't a good month and our expenses went above our our income and he, he realized he couldn't tell them that and then say he pulled up in a new car that wouldn't be good for culture um, there's there's a transparency required when you're sharing the profits of a, of a company there's an accountability that takes place and Gary wanted that accountability would be felt by the agents and by the ownership and by the leadership transparency and accountability so now you know why every month we talk about this word that you've never heard before because it's never happened with any other company you hear about transmittal and everything kind of gets shut down. It's hard to get a hold of Allison because we're in transmittal. What does transmittal mean? What it would, because in order to be transparent and accountable, our accounting calls for us to zero out our books every month. Every month we, we come up with a zero balance on our books. It's called transmittal. And it, it does take a couple business days to get done, to get done accurately. But if you're wondering why we do that, it's all because of profit share. If we didn't share profits, if it was just a, if it was a traditional company, and we just we run on a profit and loss statement, we wouldn't have to we wouldn't have to zero out our books every every month. And so, um, I just uh, I'll tell you, we've been emulated, and it's and it's a compliment. Many other companies have adopted things that we introduced, things like capping. That was a Gary Keller thing. That you know what? It, it, it's a it's a compliment that a lot of our business model has is being adopted. But this is one thing you can't. It's hard. It's impossible to adopt if you don't do it from day one. You can't just introduce this to a workforce. Coldwell Banker would not be able to introduce it. It's very very difficult. A company would have to start with one office today and do it, and, and spend 36 years getting to where getting to where we are today. Uh, we're on track to have paid out one and a half billion dollars to agents since 1991. And they, they track it, and you can find that number out there. Um, if you ever want it, let, let me know. But it's it's tens of millions uh, nationwide every month. It is real money. It's a real opportunity. And I hope, I hope this has brought some clarity around that. Uh, if there's some questions out there, um, I'd love to hear them. I don't think I missed anything there. I, I wanted to be, in, we did pretty good. That was about 20, 20 minutes, right? Did I say 20 minutes? You did good. Uh, any, anything, can I bring any clarity to anybody, to anybody around any of that? Are we all you good? Make questions? Question Hello. nine. Good. Can you recruit someone at another Keller Williams outside of Market Pro Realty? Yeah, yeah, can absolutely, and, and thanks for pointing that out. Well, here's a good example. I don't know if you, if you heard, Johnny Williams is my sponsor. He's in Southlake. But what happens is the way the system is, it's a national system. 
again, that's why we transmit. It's a national system, and he he earns what what I contribute. He will earn, and anybody in my downline. So he doesn't have to do any accounting. He just gets a check on the 21st of every month, and he gets a check. I usually get a phone call from him, like on the 22nd. So it sounds something like this. Thanks, Mike. You know that was awesome. You know it, it's it, it's a Yes, we can have a downline in another city. Um, Kathan's sitting, he, Kathan has recruited an agent already. He's got an agent interviewing in Atlanta, in verbally committed, and he's got another commitment, a verbal commitment in the Dallas area. So he's going to have, he's going to be receiving these reports from their market centers monthly. It's a very exciting thing. Um, and and I, I don't want to leave you without without letting you know that there's a real sense of morality through this. And, and one thing, once you've been with this company, if you've been with this company prior to April 1st of this year, you vest in three years. That means when you retire, or when you move on, you will still earn your profit share in a three year period of time. Now, the international ALC amended that this year. For those of you brand new agents, Courtney Standridge, I think I got you in just under the gun, but I think after April, after April, it's a seven year vesting period, which it's irrelevant because you're gonna be with Keller Williams the rest of your lives anyways, but it's a seven year period where you vest, what's called vesting. When you vest, that is always gonna be your profit share money, which by the way, you can will it, you can will it to your children when you pass one day. So it's, it's literally generational wealth. And uh, I'll leave you with, with just this thought. Our highest profit share earner in the company is Linda McKissick. She's out in North Texas. And last year, she had her best profit share month. Her best profit share year was $1.6 million. There's, there's about 10 agents. Most of them kind of started with Gary early on, that now make a million bucks a year in profit share alone. It's really something to build your future retirement around. It's, it's, uh, it really is. So thanks guys for letting me jump in. Mike, on, thank on you that. so much for coming. One of the things I wanted to tag onto what Erin asked Mike, just to make sure that you understand this. So she could sponsor someone else in another market center. So those people can sponsor anywhere in the whole world. So your downline grows without you doing anything at all. It doesn't have to be right here. And so it just, and, and it does, there's no other company that allows you to, to give an inheritance, to, to will it, whatever you wanna to do to somebody else, have a beneficiary that can take this money and continue it to grow. And so the other thing is, as long as the agent is at Keller Williams, is when you make that profit share. If they leave, then there's gonna be no more money coming in. Yep, yeah. So, hey, if you guys see me around the market center and want to visit about it, it's really something I love it. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm involved and uh, have been. I heard about it 20 years ago, but it took me about 10 years before I even sponsored somebody. It tells you I'm, I'm a little slow adopter, but really, it's a big, big part. You know what? It's even a part of my lead gen. I want to talk to one or two agents with some other companies, somebody that I'm co-opting with. And I just kind of want to want to ask, hey, would you want to sit and talk to our team leader? Um, those are that's a that's a cool question. That's considered lead gen. I bet you Marcelo will let you use that as a contact if we're trying to get our contacts in every day. Um, Absolutely. One or two, three, one or two, three little, uh, little recruitments in here. Let's let's all you know. Let's all grow the company and grow our downlines for sure. But uh, Marcella, thank you for everything that you do. You you carry on and. Uh, I love it, and uh, I look forward to seeing everybody. Well, thank you, Mike. We appreciate you a lot. So, like I said, he is one of our investors, and he does have a heart for your success. He's one of the nicest people, loving, that you will ever talk to in this market center. He just cares. So thank you, Mike, for spending your time with us today. Loved it. Okay, so we're going to go into today what I talked about was how do you do a virtual listing appointment? So again, I'm going to open you up just a second because I want to ask a question. Is there anyone online with us today that's been doing virtual listing presentations? Unmute yourself and say yes, if you have. 
Okay, let's ask. Yo, no, go ahead. Who was that? Jenny. Okay, Jenny, tell me what you did. Um, well, like we normally practice, you know, so I just set up the appointment and made sure we had the right Zoom number. So normally I would do like FaceTime, kind of through Facebook. Uh -huh. um, and so like originally before I had Zoom, I would send like my presentation to them through email and then I would have one and we would just kind of go through it together and I would talk to them through FaceTime, um, okay. Facebook, but I haven't really done one yet with Zoom, but it would definitely be a lot easier since I've gotten some practice doing it um, with yes. our team. One of the things she just said was really critical, guys, that a lot of times when we're having training, then I may say, share your computer. We're on Zoom because, and I don't do that to be mean, but until you've actually had some experience, you don't know what it looks like from the side. And, and Jenny will agree, because we've done this on our team stuff. You don't know what it looks like from the person that's actually speaking from that side, because you've got to move that sharing bar around. Sometimes it's in front of you and you don't want to do that. And the people know what you're doing. However, let me say this, most people, are very forgiving. You feel like you have to be perfect at this, you don't. They know you're human and they like that human aspect of the people that we're talking to. So I'm gonna run down through the listing presentation quickly, but I wanna show you because we did the listing presentation earlier. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on that. However, I wanna show you what I think is important that you add to your basic listing presentation uh, if you're gonna do it via Zoom or I had a client call me that I work with and other things and they are thinking about putting their house on the, the market. And so they wanted me to show them what was happening. So this is the client that I did this with. And I thought, I'm going to share this with you guys because and he couldn't actually get on Zoom where he was. And so I did what Jenny said. I sent it ahead. He had it pulled up. I had it pulled up and we talked via phone. So you can do it either way. I think that it's much better it feels better to get them on Zoom or something where you can see each other and you can see them like Erin shaking her head yes now. So I can tell she's listening with those kind of things. So it's just, it, it just feels better to you. So let me ask you, because we've been through this, those of you that have been through it with me, what do you see on this first page that's important that you get on your listing presentation because they're gonna be seeing it somewhere else? Unmute yourself and talk to me. Pictures. Jenny, were you going to say something? Yeah, go ahead. I was talking about the pictures. The picture, yes. Um, so what would you do with the picture? What are some options we can do? Can we just take it? Because we don't have the listing and we haven't had professional photos taken yet. So what are some things we could do? Marcella, I use the Google uh, picture for okay. their own. All right, and because you know what, guys, it's really not that important which one you use because I've taken sometimes before when I couldn't find it, and this is before I thought about going out and taking it with my iPhone like that, but I've done what Keaton said, and also I've gone to the county records and just taken a picture of what's on there, not even what, because when they do that, sometimes there's been remodels and all those things, and they'll go, oh my gosh, that's my house before we did the remodels. It's a connecting thing with them when you put that on there. One of the things that I like to show on here if, is this was their house. So you can send a print off to a company called Box Brownie. So if you don't have that, write that down because it's very inexpensive. You can take a photo just with your phone, send it off, and they're pretty much like overnight. They're hours ahead uh, after us. And so if I send it off now, then this is their morning and they work. It's in Australia and they get it back by in the morning. So then you've got one where you can tell them to turn the lights on, light a fireplace, do some things like that. It's like two or $3 is all it is to enhance it with the sky and the things like that. That was one of the reasons I wanted to show you this enhanced picture. And then the other thing that I want you to, that's key on here is what? I guess making sure everything's right. Are you the Hagen teen? Yes, yes, making sure who you are and what you're showing. So I'm the Hagen team, I'm the CEO, and they explain that. One of the reasons I want everything on here is because as I talk to them and go through this listing presentation, they're gonna have the listing presentation. You know, they'll have it, I'll send it to them. They've got it anyway, but as I go through this, I'm gonna say you can always refer back to the very beginning. It's like a snapshot of who I am. So it's just another way that they can go back and find out 
uh, the information about uh, who I am. All oh, right. I, actually, I was asking the question. Uh, is it spelled right? Is see that down there? H A G A. I, Where, your oh, team, team, right? It's team instead of team. Yeah, no, I just put this one on here and I did misspell okay. it. Thank you very All much right. for telling me that. I mean, you and would you're just right. take somebody it does to keep to spelled right. <laughs> 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 Yes, I typed that on there yesterday and I made a mistake. Y'all keep me honest with this. Okay, thank you, Babette. So make sure it's correct. That is a great, <laughs> no, honestly, I did that to see if y'all would catch it. That's <laughs> Okay, so the next page this is what what does it say over there our goal. it's our goals for the meeting that's exactly right this is what we're going to accomplish and there's three important issues here motivation price and marketing somebody tell me why i have those in those that order Well, like I have this young couple that's getting ready to sell their home. And at first I was like, how motivated are they? And I, you know, we went over the list and everything and um, boy, they have followed up on everything I've asked them to do. They've already got their finances. They are very motivated, which, you know, you, you just never know. So you have to determine that um, to, to know when you're setting your goals, if there's somebody I think that's going to be on this quarters or in next quarters. So. That's cool. Well, that's correct. And you know what this is, Babette? You're exactly right. That was a great answer. This is your negotiating tool. You know, they're, you know, they're really motivated. You know, they're big why. You know, the family is moving. The husband's already moved. The wife is here with five children. And she really wants to get moved with her husband or they've outgrown their home and they're really motivated. They're ready to move or they want to move because both of them are going to be working at the home now. They're not going back to the office. That's something we're going to hear more and more today. So what is their motivation? Because when you come in with a price on a house and it's like $5,000 off, you can figure a payment. What does it make the difference on a payment of $5,000? Not that much. And so it boils down to remember, you just give them the facts. It boils down to what their motivation is. For $20 a month, would you rather have this house that you very much love or is it worth waiting? and this house being gone. So you go back to those motivating factors that are in there and it is up to them, but it reminds them of what they're looking for when you know that. Okay, so it's a little different than what I thought. I was thinking motivation, how motivated they are to move, but you're talking motivation as to the, the reasons why they wanna move. Correct, but okay. what you're saying is not wrong because okay. you want someone motivated. You wanna know where they are because if they're not motivated and they're going, I just wanna see what happens if I put it on the market, and so I don't care, I don't have to accept an offer, you know, then you, they're not nearly as motivated in that listing are the buyers. There's a lot of buyers that are just looky loose out there and you need to tell them in this market, it is a seller's market. If you find a house that you're wanting, I don't care what price it is, it's going with multiple offers if it's priced right. Um, I just heard this morning, Eric and Amy put their house on the market and I think he had seven or eight over in Shadow Valley. And that's not a low end house over there, over the market value. And it's so within, I don't remember how many, it was like quick. I don't know if it was a day, but my point is it's not just the hundred, not just the 200, it's all prices that are in there. And then the second thing is the price. So first of all, we're gonna do their motivation. Second is the price and third is the marketing. Why have I put the price second? We talked about this. it's priced right, it will sell quickly. Correct. That's right. If it's priced right, it will sell. But the reason we put it second here is when you're talking to them, Aaron, and negotiating price, if they're saying, and you're saying it's worth with your, your report, your CMA, you're saying it's worth 225 and they're insisting that they want 250 and you've shown them why it won't be. And they said, I don't care. I want to list it for 250. Then if you can't get them, to the price that's right, you have to decide, are you willing to take an overpriced house? Are you willing to let it sit there? Are you willing to have the seller come back and be disgruntled with you at this point? You know, the other thing on price is the contract, you know, and so if they are not gonna pay you 6% commission, are you willing to reduce your commission? No, do you have any other questions? 
you know, at that point. So um, I know that's what I say. And then marketing. Marketing, I have third, because if you can't get a good motivation and you can't agree on a price, then you're not going to have um, a reason to really get heavy into the marketing. The things that, like Babette said, she doesn't do anything. The most important thing, once you get that listed right with those people that you know, is to go into marketing what you're going to do at that point. So you'd move through there. Craig, did you have your hand up? You're just saying. I was just saying good job. That, yeah, I agree. Okay, yep. thank you. All right, and then this goes along with what we were talking about, their move, their motivation. And hopefully you've asked some of these questions on the phone before you go. One of the things I wanted to point out on here was the third one. Somebody read it to me and tell me what you think that means. Why are you doing that? Have you ever considered what net proceeds would be necessary from the sale of your home? And this is pretty much going back to our net sheet that you spoke of before. Um, this is a great way to just get in touch with your seller and let them kind of see where they're at because sometimes they might have an unrealistic number of what their proceeds are going to be. And then later on in the presentation, you're going to give them more facts on why or why not it's not going to be that way great answer jenny i am proud of you whoop, whoop. Um, this tells you when you're asking them do you have any idea what net proceeds because you've not shown them a net sheet here you've not given them any prices and you know in your mind that you're going to try to get them at about 225 and they go yeah i've got to have 250 you don't go, well, you're not going to get 250 here. You go, really? Okay, well, we're going to look at that in just a little bit. When you get to that net sheet and when you get to the pricing on your CMA, you're going to know that you're going to need to make sure, overly make sure, that they understand how you came to the price that you came to. It's going to be really important so they're not stuck on that 250 that they said that was in there. And then the fourth one, do you know the principal balance of your mortgage? Why is that important? That's what you owe on the home. And if you don't know that, then you can't arrive to net proceeds or the agent can't arrive to net proceeds. That's great, Keaton. That's exactly right. And when they tell you that, again, you've already got your, your net sheet done, but when they tell you that and you're in the listing presentation, here's where you wanna have that conversation with them is to make sure, and they might wanna even call their mortgage company and talk to them and find out what would my principal balance be as of 30 days out when we get this home sold. So, and then they're gonna have a payoff. Are there any, are they, have they had it a long time? Are there any prepayment penalties, anything like that involved? They might wanna ask about their escrow account, what's in there. This is a time for you to talk to them about their uh, loan that they've got with their lender and advise them to go ahead and call so you've got good numbers that you're gonna work with and you can change that net sheet. Good, thank you, Keaton. All right, hang on, I gotta move. Uh, I'm not gonna go through these right now. We went through these. We're not gonna go through these. Okay, the essential ingredients. This is your formula. We have condition, location, market, terms, and price. And so we go through each one of these so that you can explain them. Again, we're not gonna cover this. We may take a couple of these each time and go through them. I'm gonna move on. This is condition. So y'all look through this this week because we're going to come back and see if you've got any questions. One of the things that's so important when you get ready to do this listing presentation is that you understand how to walk through this listing presentation. So Keaton told me that he got on, I set up those rooms that you can get into so you can script practice or you can go in there and role play. He's looking for someone that would like to some mornings get in there and go through your listing presentation with them or talk, practice your scripts and things. So if, is there anyone on here that would like to have someone to practice with in the mornings? Scaredy cats. I think we have us scheduled for Wednesday mornings, right, Keith? Yeah, yes, yes. I, I just about to say that. We, me and, okay. um, but I'd love to practice with a different partner every day. I've got a partner on Monday and then now with Babette on Wednesdays, gotcha. but I'm open for, three other days in the week, but I'm sure others have, have the same. Does anyone else want to 
practice your scripts or practice your listing presentation with someone because I'm going to have you do it on here at some point. I'll post it on Facebook, Marcella, yeah. and then we can, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. I, honestly, I can't encourage you enough because practice, you're either going to practice with each other or you're going to practice on your clients and you're going to be much better off if you practice with each other. So uh, these are the market statistics. We're not going to go through these today because I want to get to the thing that we were talking about. Each week we'll cover the a few of these in detail. So you guys, when we come back, uh, discuss these. If there's something that you don't understand in some of these stats and things, let me know. Some of you that have listing presentations that you're using that you had in the past, I encourage you to put some of these monthly inventory, what's happening, so you can talk about a seller's market here. So they understand why you're pricing it the way you are. And so that you guys understand why I'm saying go after listings. It's really, and you know what, that hasn't changed. In real estate, that's been the same for ever since I've been in 1985. You list to exist. It hasn't changed. Okay, I'm going to move past all this, past all this, past this. Does everybody understand how to explain the percentage of the market in this uh, pyramid? Somebody do this for me out loud because this is probably one of the most important pricing uh, uh, slides that you've got. It's easy. Somebody explain it to me. Well, I love this pyramid because it brings a visual viewpoint to the sellers. So clearly in the middle, you see the market value. Uh, if we list it at market value, on the other side, it's going to show the percentage of buyers that are going to be interested into the house. If you list it above 10%, you're going to only get about 30% of that uh, buyer flow. If you list it 15% above, you're going to get about 10% of that buyer flow. And then vice versa going below, if you list it 10% below market value, you're going to get 75% of the buyer's flow. If you list it, if you list it at 15% below market value, you're going to get, you're going to get about 90% of the buyer's flow. And all this really ties into how important the first two weeks are that we market the home. Uh, Cause after those first two weeks, we really don't get like everybody. It's going to get reduced tremendously where people are only going to view the home that are just buyers that haven't found the house that they were looking for or new buyers. You are awesome, Jenny. I tell you what, everybody that's sharing today, Carrie, I know we have had Aaron that shared a couple of times, Jenny shared a couple of times, Babat, Keaton, has anyone else shared on here? I want you to give them 500 extra KW bucks today. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, for That's what's going to make this good. And Honestly, Jenny, I am so proud of you that this is good. Tell you what, this comes into play, guys. And Jenny's hadn't been around a long time. She's new just like you guys are. Um, so this is really important. What we did was make her say her, the listing presentation in front of everybody. She studied really hard and boy, she knocked it out. Her Jessica did the same thing. It makes a difference. The teacher learns more than the student does when you've got to present in front of someone. But if somebody has their house in like the 250 and the 225, if they go, I still want to do it at 225, once you present your, your uh, CMA to them, come back to this slide and go, look, if you go just 10% above, look what happens. Are you willing to lose half of the buyers that were going to look at your house? Come back. These are statistics. It doesn't matter what the market is. If the market is a seller's market, a buyer's market, doesn't matter what it is. These stand true. So good job, guys. Um, Okay, this is where, and I'm going to move everybody out for just a few minutes, if I can get this thing to slide down. There we go. So let's take a look at the market, and this is what Jenny was talking about a few minutes ago. Whoops, my little fingers got happy. This is just a picture of the net sheet. So I'm going to ask a question, and I'm not going to bring y'all back down here to look at here, but does everybody know how to fill out an estimated, I am going to bring you back down. Is there anyone in this group that does not use a seller's net sheet? Raise your hand. If you so, don't know, you've not I'm used one. Myself vulnerable, just a minute. No, I love that because that's what we're here for. Everybody so, else besides Babette use, Aaron, are you talking? No, I've never used one. I yeah, this is the first time I've had access to a net sheet and this is really great, but I was trying to um, enter, I've got a couple of listings in the works and I was trying to, um, enter in all the details. So I would love for you to. We're going to go over that. That's in here. 
Fantastic. We're going to go over it. We're going to go over it. So great. Any, is there anybody else on here? Because this won't go full view that does not know how to use one of these. All right. So we're going to go over Marcella, that. I have a question. Okay. Are you sharing the, the one that we were using prior or the newest version that we've done? You know, I'm not sure which one they have on there. I think I did the old one because you presented that. So if you're okay with me sharing one that you created, then we'll do that on here. We've got a couple of different versions and we'll go over that. Um, first of all, I just want you to get used to using it and filling it out one way, but this is, there's a couple of different ones. So we'll, let me show you what we've got on here. And uh, Jason has created another one where you can fill in the blank and it's really good. And once we get used to what the blanks are, I'll share that with you guys, <laughs> whichever one you want. So when you're talking to the seller, um, here's where we're gonna go over everything that you're gonna be talking about. Now this is virtual, remember, that's what we're talking about. So this is the things you wanna make sure they understand as you go over the active, that those are the properties that are currently on the market. The souls, these are the ones that recently sold. You can expand on these definitions of this, expired someone that did not sell, and the pendings. Go into details about what each one of these means, because now we're on, uh, we're virtual and they're not going to understand a lot of these things. Then I'm going to suggest that instead of having paper because you're not there with them, that you copy your CMA. And this one happened to be in Willow Bend and it's, um, there wasn't very many that had been listed there, nor were there very many that were sold. So generally, when you do a subdivision, you're going to have what you call conforming. In a subdivision, you've got three or four, or you've got something at least that you can find back in the last six months or so. And so then you can use that. Even if you can use the subdivision, you still want to go outside the city and do it. Again, I want to, to point out on here, you need to make your grids when you're looking these up. So this is Hagen Team Current, name yours uh, McKenzie Current, name yours Aaron Current. So whatever you wanna name, go in there and put the things in there that you wanna look at that you're gonna point out to the seller when you're on this thing. And so I always put, leave the status down here, the criteria, so that they can see that I'm not changing anything. If I have to change something to get more properties, I explain to them what I did. Your goal in this presentation is so that they understand how you came up with that price. So the things that I use for my talking point in here is I use, I wanna know where it was. I wanna know, I always like to know the subdivision. Maybe I'm old school, but it just tells me a little bit more in my mind where they are. This one is in Springdale. This one I ran in the subdivision, it was in there. The list price, the list price for heated square foot, the heated square foot that's in there so you can see where we are and then bedrooms, bathroom, days on the market are gonna be really important that you include in here. The year built is gonna be important because as you're pulling these and you can't find anything, you always wanna to go to houses that are as similar as you can get because you wanna pull the things that the appraiser is gonna pull. And then the garages, sometimes I put those on there because if there's three or four as you get into a different price range in here. So, um, that's what that's the first one and then if you remember we have got Willoughby Circle 3100 and 2400 so I go in there and set these things on there if you're doing they're going to appreciate this I had one and I think I told you all about this last time that I sent this out to somebody that got to church with me and I didn't even know if they'd seen it and pretty soon I got a text and they went oh my gosh you went to so much work this makes you look like you care Plus, it makes you seem like you're intelligent about what you're talking about. Plus, it reminds you as you go in there exactly what you found. It's, it's much harder if I'm looking at this to remember what these houses look like. I don't know about you, but it's just not as easy for me. So this is 3100 Willow Bend. And what the people are going to see on here are the things that I felt like were important. This house that we're looking at, the subject house has got about 40... 500 square foot. I don't remember exactly how many, but this has got 67. So I know this one's a larger home than that one is. This one has four fireplaces. The one we were looking at only had one. Do you feel like these things that I'm showing you right here are important to point out to them? There are amenities that are going to add value when the appraiser looks at it. Now, an extra fireplace is not going to add a whole lot of value, but when you're looking at a home that's got four and they're massive and they're all in different places, the emotional value is going to be there too when you're setting this price. 
So in here, I put 6,500 and I put that it was larger. So I would remember to talk about that. Days on market was 41. It went really quick. Didn't matter what the price was. And it was built in 2006. It had a media room and it had a swimming pool. And so I wanted to show those things so they could compare what their house looked like. And it's active in their same subdivision at, uh, or it hadn't gone fast. This one's been on the market uh, 41 days. It's active and it's 134.18 a square foot. So then I move on to the next one. And this is the next one. This was 2400 Willow Bend. Now this one is 4878, closer square footage. But see, it's got five bedrooms. There wasn't that many bedrooms. It's 589000 for $120 a square foot. And it has two fireplaces. It's still got the media room. It's got the soaring ceilings, all those things in there. And these are things you want to look for. This got three tier uh, crown molding. When I was visiting with them, I said, do you have two or three tier? Because a lot, like I live in Shadow Valley and a lot of those homes before they're done only have two tier. And you can see the difference over here in this media room. Those are the things you want to look at that gives that emotional value that's there. So they can see these pictures and they can see a better comparison to what theirs is. Then I ran on here, the current, this is 43 to 4,800. This is where theirs was, residential Springdale. So I expanded it, not just to the subdivision, but I wanted to see what in the town that matched that same criteria was out there today that was comparable. Rod and I talked about this and one of the things he suggested, and I thought this was really a good idea, if they're gonna pay, 479,000, is it gonna matter if it's in Harbor Meadows or Elm Springs or Heritage Hills, if they're gonna get pay the same price, you need to see what their competition is. So again, I put this out there. Now on this one, you can see down here, I came in and typed and I did this after I did on a PC, you can do print screen on a Mac, you can just capture the picture, set it on here and then you insert a text so that you can add this on the bottom. So number one had 59 acres you can see how i went through here because again i'm not going to remember all this but as i look at this i can see three was a gated subdivision five is a gated subdivision and that makes a difference on remember we talked about location condition those things are the things that set the market value you can have one that's on water the very same house that's built just in a subdivision that's a nice subdivision but not on lake or something Location is going to make a difference. Generally, you get more for waterfront property. So again, make sure that you've got the same criteria here that you showed them on the other one so they can see you're not trying to add something to get more properties. I point that out. And then here again are the pictures of some of those that I felt like were important. Um, and that's up a little bit high for that. This is $124 a square foot and the square foot the, it's 4750 square feet and it was built in 2005. Theirs was built in 2004 and this just gives them a visual for what that house looks like. Uh, this house has a whole lot more uh, amenities than the other house did. So again this is the souls now and so what I did on the souls I ran the same criteria 43 to 48 this is sold in 180 days in Springdale. If I can find very much in 90 days, I run the 90 days. So I went back there wasn't, I went back to 180 days. So on this, I definitely want to know the uh, days on market, what was happening with them. And you can see I picked the closest ones and the closest ones was 45 and 43, 47 to where they were with different things. So you can see pictures. I've got the pictures on here. They can see the difference. This one's much newer. Again, I used this one three, so I'm gonna say see pictures. And then four, inside was comparable to this house. Um, so that was one of the reasons I used that. Again, five has got acreage with it, large pool, outside kitchen, media, not comparable, mainly because it's got acreage. And today we know that 71% of the people are wanting bigger surroundings is what they're saying and then number six was 2018 it had no pictures and it was sold the day it was listed and so it really wasn't a comparable there wasn't a whole lot of things on there so i went through here and highlighted this again you just go into your shapes put this circle around it because if you don't they all run together so you can see i've got two of them in thornberry on here 
So the main things you're wanting to do is to uh, remind yourself over at the side what they are, remind them that you're pulling the same criteria and point out which ones you're using and why you use those in there. All right, here are the pictures of the ones that we use that were comparable and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because we're gonna run out of time. Here are the pictures again of the other ones much newer. These are Thornberry. Again, you've got your media room, your fireplaces. And this is another way that um, I felt like that I would show you that you can put these on here if you don't wanna copy a whole lot of pictures and different things. Again, show them that the list price on here was $599.9. It sold for $516. Uh, it was listed at $132.08 and it sold for $113. I put that in a big red arrow here. It was on the market 134 days. You definitely want to point that out to them. And it was built in 2017. So now we are looking at 113 a foot instead of the 120 and 134 that was in there before we're coming down. Then I used, you have access to this in your box account if you're a member of Productivity Coaching. And so once a month we do, in June we do March, uh, May. So we're behind, the first of June we do the month behind it. So whatever town you're in, this has got Bella Vista, uh, Bentonville, Rogers. So you go to the town, this house was in Springdale, and then you go to the price range where you feel like it is and you look, there's 11 active listings. In the last 90 days, seven have sold. There is 2.3 sold per month. That means we have 1.6 um, month supply and the average days on market has been 149 great information for them to have and it's there for you we do this for you every month okay here is the estimated sellers net sheet and i did use yours jason on this one um and so uh oh my fingers are hitting this one here i did three of them and he had his house for sale by owner priced at 109 a foot and I think that it's there. I think there's some things that need to be improved on it for him to get that because it's been sitting there. He had it listed and you wanna go back in and look when it was listed for, look at the pictures, look at the history. So you can talk to him about that. At one point he had it listed with another agent and it was down to $100 a foot. And so I did one at 109, 105, and then I did one on the next one. And I'm gonna come back in just a second. I did the other one at $100 a foot. Now this is his house that's in there. I didn't put any inside pictures or anything for you guys to look at so you can compare it. You might wanna do that, but he knows what the inside of his house is. Now on the net sheet, and this is for Aaron in there, and we're gonna run out of time. I've only got about three minutes and I wanna do a couple of other things with you. But on the net sheet, and I know she's got some, so I'm gonna do this. This talks about the taxes, be sure and cover that. In Arkansas, taxes are paid in arrears. So that's why we, tell them here that we're taking the taxes from 2019 to 2020. Here's another opportunity for you to talk to the sellers about talking to their lender to see what's in their escrow, because it depends on what time of year it is. If the first part of the year, maybe their taxes hadn't been paid out of the escrow yet, and there may be an abundance in there. Maybe the county just went up on their taxes and there may not be enough in there. So they need to know, because when they close, if, if there's a, a period in there that there's a lag period, then they may charge them those taxes and uh, they'll get them back. So you wanna make sure that they understand that they're not gonna be paying for taxes twice when you look through the HUD. So they can find out what that is. You can go back after and you can look on county records and find out and ask them questions about that. And we talked about that when we were talking about putting your listing presentation together. So you can find out if their taxes have been paid or not been paid again, you can, can share with them what happens with their escrow and how they're gonna get the money back. This, the formulas are already in here. So when you put the $100 per square foot and you put the square footage in there, see those two are grayed out, it tells you what price is in there. This is what I use because it's what we use on our team and I'm not sure we shared this, but I will share this with you because it sounds like Jason was okay with it. He's my little Excel that helped me do this one. And then the commissions are 6% because you're listing and you're gonna pay the buyer the other three. It automatically figures your commission in here. You don't have to figure anything. Title insurance is automatically figured. Now, what I want you to understand is we price Liberty Title. That's our affiliate that we use. We price Liberty Title's title insurance premiums in there. If you're using another title company, you're gonna want to find out what, that's, what that is and manually put that in there. Change that, make sure you have the right expenses. 
and termite. When you're asking them about their termite, you wanna make sure, do they have a termite policy? Because what we have plugged in there is highlighted 150 is gonna always show in there. And that's the amount of money, generally a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on who they use for the clearance letter. In all contracts, it asks you for a one-year clearance letter from the seller for the buyers of the new owners of the home. So find out if they've, if they've just done this, then they may only have to prorate termite. They may not have any fees on termite. If they did it uh, eight months ago, they may charge them the whole premium. So they need to find out where they are on their termite. If they don't have a termite policy, this is a great time to find out. They need to contact a termite company and get an estimate. They'll come out and do free estimates, but you're going to be asked for a termite policy in that contract. Very few, 99.9% .9 of the times, you're gonna have that in your contract. You need to have that conversation with them when you're pointing out the net sheets. And then you can include the prorated taxes on there if you want to. Revenue stamps is already figured in, so you don't have to worry about that. And then Liberty is who we have. This is what they charge, and this depends. I wrote this out here on the title company. If the sellers say they wanna use another title company besides the ones that you're using, you need to explain to them, and we just had this on our team, where somebody said they wanted to use another title company and, and they went ahead and used it. No, actually this was someone in productivity coaching that I was talking to. And as we talked through it and explained, they explained to their seller that if there's a problem, if we get into this and we need attention right now, if I have a relationship with them, you have a relationship with them, we can get in touch with them. Like I got in touch with Lisa last night at eight o'clock because she had a question for this agent that I had referred her to and she got right back with her on a text. Some people are not gonna answer me because they don't know me. So it does make a difference as you build your team. When you're interviewing title companies, you tell them your expectations. Somebody wants your business enough that they're gonna answer your text and they're gonna get back with you. Maybe not at eight o'clock at night, that's 30 years of business with someone. Cause I was with her in Little Rock, she's worked with me. And when I had an LLC, I had a joint venture with a title company, she was involved with that. So the, that relationship goes back a ways, but you've got the right to ask them, how do you feel about me calling you on weekends? How do you feel about extra stuff that actually I may be asking you to be on my team to do this when I refer business to you? Um, again, so these are the fees for Liberty Title. They're plugged in there automatically. And then a tax search fee. If you're using a different company, then you need to ask them about the closing fee, the, the uh, any kind of combined fees. We just put that in there. So their closing fee was 350 and the rest of them is 250. So you need to ask, is their title search on top of that? Does this make enough for it? Find out what their fees are. And if they're individual and you wanna plug them in here, you can do that. Here's the loan payoff. If they give you an estimated loan payoff when you're talking to them, you can also plug that in here. And then repairs, home warranty, buyer's closing cost. You have this, you can do this at a later time. You can do this now if you want to. One of the suggestions that I'd make is that you keep this as clean as possible when you're presenting it so that their net proceeds can look like they're gonna be the most that they can. Explain that these things can be in here, the repairs, because what you're gonna do once you get a contract is you're gonna look at what that contract says that they need to do on the repairs, the home warranty and the buyer's closing costs. And then a survey. Keaton can tell you kinds of all kinds of stories about surveys now. Uh, most of you that have been with me in coaching before know that I preach not to tell them to get a survey, but the facts that it's extremely important that they think about, do they want a survey or do they not want a survey? And then you tell your story, my story or something else about that. And I don't have a lot of time. We're five minutes after. And then this is the net proceeds down here. So I apologize. It took just a little bit longer. Uh, for the profit share. I'm gonna go through this quickly. We'll do this another time, but I wanna show you, insert your testimonials and stuff here, there. Those are the extra things that I think you need to add. Um, first of all, and I told you we'd do buyers. Do you wanna stay on? Do you want me to do buyers? I'm gonna make it where I can see you guys. You wanna do buyers next week? We'll add that to, I mean, not buyers, uh, the builders. Would you like to see what that is? Do you have time? Tell me where you're going. You want off and do this next week? I'm not seeing yes or no, so some of you do it next I week. I would wanna do it next week. Okay, okay. That's what we'll do. Um, I'll 
I'll send put that in there. We're not going to have the extra 20 minutes with, that we had with Mike. So I'll put that in there with the buyers so that you can at least look at it. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. It's already in your box account if you want to go and look at it. So it's in the productivity coach box account. You can go in there if you're going to talk to a builder. Look at that and make it your own. Okay, do we have any questions? I'm going to stop. Marcella. Sharing. Yes. I was just, I was going to say real quick. You know, that's up to you and Rod, because uh, I made that for the team, yeah. uh, not necessarily me. So, uh, but I do think that if you share that one, it we need to really preface the fact that there are four tabs and what those things really, because if you just click on one and do it, it, it may or may not be wrong if it's cash okay. deal. Or we'll finance. take, Jason, we'll take some time and do that. Um, we'll, we'll cover those next time. Thank you. That's our That's culture. Fun. And I love that. Thank you so much for offering to do that because we've got several of those and I do love the one that you did. So, uh, has anybody got any questions? Oh, Mackenzie, you have a baby there with you. How sweet. Okay, guys, did you like this? Did you enjoy it? Has it been helpful? Yes, it's been yes. helpful. Okay. Thank good you. Good deal. All right, I will see you next week if you need me in between now. Carrie, really quick, I think there was a couple of things for that you wanted, uh, housekeeping you wanted to talk to them about. On the file folders and where they're gonna find things and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, if anybody has any box questions, just let me know. Uh, I tried my best to kind of walk Babbitt through a couple yesterday during text. I think she figured it out on her own. But um, if anybody has any questions about Box, let me know. Everybody's tracking is under the folder accountability reporting. And then within that, you'll see your tracker, but then you'll also see a folder that says KW Bucks, and that's where you can upload all your KW Bucks as well. Okay, thank you for everybody showing up today. Let's bring somebody else next time. If you're enjoying this, if you're on here and you don't have a contract with us, uh, put in the uh, chat box that you're interested in talking to us about what we offer in productivity coaching. Keller Williams is changing that. So we are moving more to the middle uh, so that people can coach with us, get these things done and move into production and cap twice. So thank you again for coming. Love you guys. Have a great week. And let's go get some production done. Thank you, Marcella. Thank you're you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you.